All right, thank you for checking out my video on rotating vertical hydroponic systems. Today I'm going to be talking you through some of the different iterations of these rotating vertical grow towers that I've built. Um, I've built stationary ones as well, ones that don't spin, but I'll save those for a different video. So a real quick overview on how these function is. To the right of the picture here, it's out of frame, but there is a nutrient tank. And inside of that nutrient tank is a pump. And connected to that pump is a 1 inch PVC pipe. And that PVC pipe uh, goes up to the ceiling here. And if I zoom in, you can see the pipe. Um, it goes up to the ceiling. And connected to that 1 inch pipe are uh, half inch pipes just above each of these grow towers here. So the water is pumped out of the nutrient tank through the 1 inch pipe into the half inch pipes. Uh, and into the water catcher here and as the towers spin each of these tubes where the plants are growing from are watered with an equal amount of water so it trickles down the tube into the water catcher here and if you follow my mouse you can see this black tubing here that's a three-quarter inch poly tubing and that three-quarter inch poly tubing eventually goes back to the nutrient tank and the cycle repeats itself. Okay, so here is my first iteration of the rotating vertical grow tower. A heavy duty disco ball spinner is actually spinning the tower and uh, those, uh, the disco ball spinner that I used, um, I believe it was $120 off Amazon. I went through two of them. The first one lasted me a month, and the second one lasted me two or three months. Um, they'll die eventually, at least for the amount of weight that I was using. And as you can see, the plants are getting a little bigger here. Um, just real quick, one of the cool things about rotating vertical hydroponics outside is, you know, clouds move around, especially here in the Pacific, Pacific Northwest. Um, different parts of your garden will have different light intensity throughout the day, different shaded spots throughout the day. And if you have a rotating system, it really helps with even light coverage. So for the rest of these videos here, starting on this one, um, the grow is now inside. I have a, I have a, uh, a commercial warehouse where I do my growing out of and I moved everything inside because the summer was over and we we're moving into fall. As you can see I'm using red blue light um, I am using red blue light in in this video but I have a pair of pink canceling uh, sunglasses over my camera lens here you can see uh, I was just trying to uh, make the filming process a little bit easier and reduce some of that pink glare so I put the sunglasses in front of my camera lens uh, but yeah as you can see the plants are looking healthy they're getting bigger as each video goes on and um, I changed to white light pretty soon it's actually kind of a funny story. I was driving home from a friend's house around 9 o'clock, about an hour before the lights automatically shut off. And I was passing my shop on my way home. And through the window, as I'm passing by, is this pink light just beaming out of the front window. And uh, it's a really busy street in my city. And yeah, I just, I was like, all right, I better switch to white light so people don't think something sketchy is going on in there. I don't want a robbery or anything, but uh, yeah, um, I'll make a separate video on um, on lighting. Um, but I do want to mention that uh, if you get into vertical hydroponics, I highly suggest you learn how to wire your own lights um, so you can build your own custom grow lights. You don't have to be an electrician or anything. You just need some really basic skills and you know, they'll help you uh, customize your grow in ways that you couldn't do without those skills. 
and they'll also if you can wire your own lights uh, build your own custom grow lights you can save a lot of money because grow lights are not cheap so that was the last video of the disco ball spinning towers so that era is over and this is the first version of my mobile uh, of my mobile tower and you'll see here in a second in the next video what I mean when I say mobile so there's basically I, I, I frame this out and this now works basically as one piece and as you can see as you can see I can move it around while it's spinning while the lights are on and I can basically park it under one of those half inch pipes under you know that's the water source and I, yeah I can park it under the, one of those pipes and connect the three quarter inch poly tubing to the bottom reservoir here um, so the water can drain and yeah that's about it uh, I have a potentiometer wired in so I can control the speed at which the towers spin so if you, you can see the background the disco ball spinner is still chugging away I think after I filmed this video it died like maybe a few days afterwards um, but yeah those things are not cheap they're like 120 bucks a pop so uh, I would uh, I would avoid the disco ball spinner unless you are going to use um, a, a smaller system for the amount of weight that I was using those disco ball spinners will not last at least the one that I bought And as you can see, the water is draining from the pipes. I'll have to make another video about, like a DIY video. Uh, you can see by all the wood <laughs> that basically these systems are completely custom. You have to build your own parts. Uh, I had to figure all this out over a you know a time period of months. It took me a long time, uh, off and on to figure out how to make everything work the way I wanted it to um, and yeah this video it's you know it's just more of an overview video I'll, I'll do a separate DIY video it's not that hard to make these grow towers but you know it it does take some time and uh, some some tools um, So here's my lettuce tower. And here's my basil tower. I make like the best pesto ever from the basil grown right here out of these towers. Um, I filmed this video of my Swiss chard and Asian leafy greens video because I wanted to mention that um, if you're growing out of these one and a half inch PVC pipes with the 45 degree Y's um, the root systems on things like Swiss chard uh, e even basil uh, are quite big they'll get long they'll get thick and they'll clog the one and a half inch pipes so a way to avoid that is to keep the plants nice and trimmed and to um, and to uh, maybe even uh, harvest the plants early before they, the root systems get a chance to grow so large and clog up your pipes. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that is... Uh, that is my brief overview on these vertical rotating towers. Um, like I said, I will make some more videos here. I'll make a video on the stationary systems that I've built. Uh, I want to make a video about all the different light setups that I've used. Um, yeah, I've gone through quite a few light systems to, you know, uh, to get me to the point where I can build them affordably and cover the 
the amount of area that I want it to cover because uh, these uh, these grow towers here are about six feet tall um, so you know that's a uh, that's a strange grow light if you can find a six foot tall grow light uh, you know it's probably gonna cost you a lot of money because LED grow lights are not cheap that's why I said uh, that you should you know really invest some time and effort in uh, building your own custom grow lights so I'll make a video all about lighting and I'll also make a video about uh, a DIY video uh, about how to build these grow towers anyways thank you very much for watching uh, leave any questions and comments below uh, please subscribe and thank you have a good one